Hurricane here at MAGFest, and I'm here with... Um, my name's Brian. And we're here to talk about his uh, new indie game, Bitrat. is this available on? Uh, what will it be? It available? will be available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So PC, uh, basically all common PC platforms. Steam? But, yeah. Well, we're hoping to do a Steam Greenlight uh, 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 kind of kickoff in the next few weeks with the demo that we brought to MagFest. So um, describe your game for me. Okay, so Bitrat is basically a story-driven cyberpunk puzzle game where the player takes the role of an artificial intelligence that's becoming self-aware. Uh, but we kind of wanted to sidestep the cliche of like the evil AI that wants to take over the world. So instead, our AI is sort of driven by curiosity and the desire to sort of test the boundaries of the world around it. And the humans are kind of the antagonists in the game because... Oh, kind of like um, Short Circuit with Johnny Five. Yeah, a little bit like that. Yeah, a little bit like that. <laughs> and so, like, you know, the humans are panicking and they're freaking out. They think this thing must be evil because... You know, why else would a computer be trying to escape the corporation that created it? But really, the AI is almost more childlike and is just trying to make sense of what it means to be alive and, and, and just trying to explore the space that it's in. And uh, we called it Bitrat because there are these little rats uh, that kind of explore the puzzles in the game. And we like the idea that the AI identifies more with the rats than it does with the people because uh, the rats have like broken out of laboratories and cages and they're kind of living in the walls and the AI thinks, well, if they can break out, maybe I can break out, and that's what kind of kicks off the story. So it's a narrative-driven game? Yeah, it's a narrative-driven puzzle game, and, and so the, the, the puzzle mechanics are a lot a lot like Pipe Dream, uh, if you've ever played that, and, and uh, it's sort of like a pathfinding game where we give you a start point and an end point, and you're trying to figure out how to work your way from point A to point B, but you have to observe very particular rules. And in our case, the rules have to do with a network data grid and then like a, and then like the power grid, the electrical grid, and sort of figuring out the interplay between those systems. And uh, every time you solve a piece of the puzzle, you get a little more of the story, which is mostly emails between the people in the world who are, you know, trying to make sense of what's happening, trying to grasp it, trying to, you know, consider the ethical implications of, you know, an AI that, you know, feels like it has its own sense of purpose and its own curiosity. So, um, so when do you think the game will be available for uh, consumers? So, get a hold of. Yeah, I mean, our, our hope is in the next six to eight months. We've been working on it for two years already, and uh, you know, the demo we've brought here is is a pretty strong like uh, demonstration of like you know the core gameplay and kind of story building. And we're going to release this demo in the next few weeks, uh, and hopefully use that to kick off a Steam Greenlight uh, campaign. And if that goes well, we'll be you know just pushing to develop more levels and uh, more story content, and then kind of pruning it back to the best stuff, and then releasing that. Uh, yeah. I mean, at the latest by the end of the year, but hopefully like more like six to eight months. It definitely has a very nostalgic look to it. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the kind of 2D pixel art thing, we took it to sort of a, an extreme. A lot of people have been doing pixel art stuff, but a lot of people use more modern graphical effects. And we really just kind of stuck to like the core kind of sprite animations and just simple color palettes. And then we've also got like a kind of like crunchy chiptune soundtrack to go along with that and just sort of simple synth sound effects so everything's kind of this just sort of lo-fi aesthetic that for me is like what I grew up playing so that's what you know I kind of look for in video games often it's like that just kind of straightforward style with really solid mechanics and story. Yeah I was definitely drawn to the look of it and the, the color scheme also reminds me a little bit of Metal Gear Solid yeah, yeah. 1. Yeah, I think there's... there's like the codex screen and Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think we kind of wanted that sort of like electronic, kind of like, almost like, uh, kind of like digital, digital view, you know, just like a simple set of like monochromatic colors for each zone in the game. That could be like a display, yeah, on an old mainframe or, yeah, like a heads-up display in like a Metal Gear. All right, well, I look forward to seeing it on Steam, hopefully, like, not on wood. Yeah, fingers yeah, yeah. Up, awesome. Up. Thanks so much. All right, thank you for your time.